Welcome to Jam for the Flam. I am your host, DJ216. I'm about to take you into the outer realms of the Ween universe from demos, other projects the boys were in, and even solo stuff. I dig deep on this one and your ears are not prepared, I promise you that. So Jam for the Flam, what is it? The word flam was tossed around the Ween fan base as a Ween fan and I don't know why stuff has to get labeled, but it does and it is and it's used. So I took that, mixed it with the jams I was doing for the group, and voila, jam for the flam. I never really say flam, but it sounded good together. I came up with this DJ show named Jam for the Flam, and thus, history was made. But Facebook did not dig this at all, man. They were flagging me, muting out songs, but keeping my vocals in between the songs. It was a mess. It was hot garbage at that point. There was no point any longer. Who wants to listen to me talk for two hours? So what we're doing here is a podcast version of the show. So much cool stuff going on, like the demos I'm playing are um, cleaner than you'll ever hear because I have actually cleaned them. They were in bad shape, a lot of hissing and whatnot, crackles and pop. I did my magic. I did the best I could without the stems and whatnot. I did the best I could with what I had. So bear with me, and if you don't dig it, my man Mickey has something to say. You didn't pay a cent, so don't fucking complain. <laughs> totally. <laughs> shit, shit is free. All right, let's do this. Let's get this party started on Jam for the Flam with the 10 minute face melting version of Monique the Freak from the Craters of the Sack album. If you don't know it, find it, bump it, you'll love it. You are now entering Jam for the Flam. Let's go, go, go. She's a 
cheese if you lose all the cats of I'm a cactus cat flower Squealing creatures know his name Making moves on the top of the hour You'd think the boy's insane Yes, you'd think the boy's insane from the book of Faust. Save him, save him, save him. Save him.
chance Double celebration Cause it's like you should in the Why he's 
the most important mission No. 
time in the killing heat. A sheet of war light up the sky. The truth is not revealed. Shattered dreams of yesterday, forgotten in the war. Under battle, march our sons. Returning nevermore They suffer and bleed for money and greed Unto death Husbands and fathers and brothers and sons Will not forget It's soldier bleeding badly A victim of the past Send them home in how long must this last? They suffer and bleed for money and greed unto death. Husbands and fathers and brothers and sons will not forget. What's up, everybody? I'm here with the great Todd Cox. How you doing, man? I'm uh, doing well, Rick. How you doing tonight? Pretty damn good. Uh, so where are you calling from? Lake Havasu City, Arizona. AZ. Of all the darn places. Yeah, yeah. My daughter lived out there for like three years. <laughs> she hates it. Yeah, I run. <laughs> <laughs> she does, man. She was no, like, it was so no, hot. No comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> so she came back to Ohio and it's snowy as fuck out here, man. Yeah, it's cold here. I'm out in the shop tonight, and it's it's a little bit cold. So. Oh, you're working on some yeah. stuff, huh? Ah, uh, just wrapping up. And I'm uh, I'm on the line with you now. So. So is this stuff that you're gonna have for um the next Ween tour? Uh, well, right now I'm trying to get the shop back up in, into running operation. That's been uh, it's been a trying year, and and as I'm setting everything up, it keeps breaking. But yes, hopefully, uh, hopefully, yeah, I'll have some have some new stuff soon. Uh, I've got a few pieces that I cast before the shop closed earlier this year that I'm wrapping up first. But yeah, I'll get more parts in tomorrow, and, and hopefully the shop will be up and running in time for February, possibly. You're known for making the best in the game, man. Like, we all get our shit from fucking Alice and whoever from China, but you're the man. Yours is, <laughs> yours is American. American made. <laughs> so yeah, great. yeah, it's it's done right here, yeah. That's awesome, man. So how long you been doing this for? Like, when's the first time you started, like, casting? Uh, well, the first time I cast was, oh, I think it was seventh grade in Maine, where I grew up. I actually had uh, part of my industrial arts class was uh, casting, and that was a uh, seed that got planted. It didn't it didn't come to fruition until, well, quite a, quite a bit later, but I, uh, I went to the Academy of Art, and uh, the main reason I went there is because they had a bronze casting class, and uh, yeah, and so that it was you know something I always wanted to do, and I'd loved that casting since I first saw it when I was a kid, and and, uh, and then yeah, in, in school got to do casting, neon, and did small metal casting and jewelry, but my main focus was on metal arts and bronze casting. So okay, yeah, I, the the jewelry kind of fell in my lap a little bit later, I think more or less thanks to Johnny. Johnny, Mr. Johnny Williams. Yeah, I had uh, I made a ring for myself for my birthday. It was, I had come up with a ring project to cast, and I made a boom this ring, and the, the 3D gem eyes came out of it. But I would made a ring with that 3D business uh, on it. Johnny ended up getting it off of me, hanging out at the house on tour or something like that. And uh, Did he go, one? <laughs> he always told me he wanted to examine to make a shirt. <laughs> One shirt. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't quite remember, but it, it ended up being backstage uh, the Dece or New Year's shows in Denver, 2011, and Johnny flipped off the camera. I came and took a picture, and uh, and that got on was. Oh, nice. And it was yeah, it was on was, and and from that. Uh, a couple people, um, uh, Jeffrey, uh, Alan Smith, and Megan Joe, uh, both had seen it. I guess that's where they saw it, and uh, and Jeffrey contacted me. He was probably one of the first people that actually contacted me. I made a few pieces that I'd given to people along the road, but I, that was pretty much the first time someone actually like hit me up to make one outside of just the maybe twelve that I'd made. Yeah, I appreciate what you do because I worked at this one warehouse. And I was cutting metals, but the metals that I was cutting were in the foundry that was behind me. 
Yeah. And that bitch was hot as hell, dude. And in the summertime, there's no air conditioning. I would have each person that was cutting metals for the molds, they both had like two industrial fans and you could barely feel them. So yeah, I, I wore a thermometer underneath uh, underneath my coat, my, my uh, apron, all my gear one time and, and uh, pulled it out. Uh, right after I got done casting, and it was about 180 inside the gear. Shit, I wish it was that, man. That the, <laughs> the fucking foundry was like 1,300 degrees. It was insane. Well, it, yeah, I mean, you're standing next to 4,000 degrees or something like that when you're actually casting. It's, yeah, I mean, any exposed skin can get burnt. Yeah, I had a. Um, I remember they had me go in there because they were short people, and I had to put it on this fucking gear, and then these like big fat like mitten gloves or whatever the fuck they were yep and then i had to carry this shit that just came out of the oven put it down and they poured the metal in there the liquid metal and then you had to take that and set it oh dude fuck that job man that's rough <laughs> <laughs> that's rough i did not like that one bit and then i caught my leg on fire or the my pant leg and i had boots on it dude it was a mess it was well, like, that's just that's just that's just a day of work to me. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, man. <laughs> like, do you burn yourself a bunch, man? Because that fucking shit. Oh I... yeah, yeah. Cut, cut, and burn. Catch myself on fire. You, you name it. It's uh, it happens. And see, uh, that's why your pins yeah. are worth how much they're worth, man. <laughs> like, listen, everybody. His pins, he gets on fire. So pay this man. <laughs> pay this motherfucker, man. So okay. Uh, actually, uh, Ken Coghill, he always uh, says, "Well, can you leave the blood on it?" Right, <laughs> you should. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be dope, man. Yeah, but then people have your DNA. You don't want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, no. You're gonna have people <laughs> making mutilated fucking Todd Coxes and shit. Man. Yeah, no, no, no replicating <laughs> of a man. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, you don't want that shit. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, what pieces or stones do you like to use? Well, like, what are your favorite ones to use? It's always the next one. You know, it's it's what I, it's what I haven't used. It always makes me curious. It's like you know, I'm trying trying out more and more stuff and building different inventories. But uh, I don't know. The lab opals have just been fun. I mean, every time I use them, they just they pop. So it's that's been really fun to do. Um, and then uh, some of the the freeform one that I I did um, for Aaron Bowman. Um, it was a little small boog on a like a spiral kind of organic e creature form, and yeah, it came out really cool. So I, I want to start doing some more of that. Like, how long does one like if you're making one piece? How long does that take to create? I mean, from from the initial concept, if I've got the pattern, I mean, the patterns can take. I mean, I just I just finished up the pattern that I've been working on for almost a year. But that's been off and on when I've got time, and that's one hopefully I'll have done soon. But once the pattern's made, um, to get it the pattern through the mold process and into wax and clean the waxes and get the waxes ready to cast and then cast them and then have to cut them off and then grind them and clean them and now fill in them and all the other stuff. I mean, it's it's you know to do a batch, you know. It's, to do one is the same amount of time as it is to really do it to do a batch. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, the shortest time I've done it, uh, turn around, uh, was like two weeks, pretty much it took to, to do a small batch. And that was with a more, that was the V3 production, more production style ones. But, but the custom ones, I mean, they can, they can take up to a month sometimes. The proof is in the pudding when you get that Todd yeah. Cox original, the OG original. Yeah, and then and then you get the, the juggling aspect of it in trying to do you know that if I just did one at a time I couldn't well, I couldn't just do one at right, a time yeah. I'd, I'd have to do something else. So I got my few Todd Coxes and I'm just hanging up. They'll never leave my fucking house, dude. Never, <laughs> ever, ever. And you know what I regret? I regret never putting the money down to get that fucking devil horn one. Uh yeah. Yeah, those were those were rough. That that whole project with my good buddy Kevin Gray, who's another jeweler I went to college with. We worked on those on uh, eighteen hours a day, seven days a week, sometimes twenty to twenty two hours a day for three months to do that order. And I think I put out somewhere around like ninety nine of them. And it took us it took us three months to do them all. And then motherfuckers are selling them for like crazy amounts of money. Bastards. Yeah, I'm hey, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I can't I can't say anything about it. I, I just auctioned a few of my early pieces, man. Uh, you know, to get to get the shop back off the ground, and and I was I'm very thankful that the, that they are what they are, and, and that people love them so much. I like those bugnishes that you made with the uh, I, the one that I liked the most was the uh, 
the Godwin Satan one. Oh, that was yeah. a pretty cool one. I mean, that color combo is just sweet. You can't beat it. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I kind of almost regret not putting out more of those, and, and it's something that I might revisit just because I didn't put out that many, and, and they were kind of a hit. Uh, I wasn't expecting. Um, so I'm, I'm toying with the idea. I don't want to devalue someone's piece by doing it, but you know, yeah. um, it's something I've, 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 I've played around with doing, maybe do another, another series of them in the, in the V3 version or something like that. Pull the, pull, mix the old colors. Here's what you can do. Yeah. Whatever color combo you made, reverse it. So then it's not exactly like those. Boosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Boosh. There you go. Well, hey, man, why am I doing this all myself? I, I need to have you as my kid. Yeah, dude. I, yeah. Hey, I'm going to yeah. manage you. I got you. I got you, boo. We got this. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I've been, I've, <laughs> I've been in Army for a while, but, you know, there's, there's, uh, I'm running out of coal. Let's go right. that way. The season is slowing down. And with that said, <laughs> thank you so much, man. This is so much fun, man. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to keep catching up with you, man. Yeah, I hope Dean Wing comes to Cleveland again because I know you guys will come out for that shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that Midwestern hospitality, dude. Come on. Yes, dude. Always, you know? dude. Always. Can't, can't go wrong there, buddy. Yeah, no doubt. So what song do you want me to play next? Oh, let's blow it out with Boomish. You know, everybody says it. Let's, let's do let's it. Let's do this. All right. I got you, man. All right, brother. Boomish is the way I am. Yeah. Uh-huh.
next song is um it's called uh birthday boy and i wrote it on my birthday um it's about this uh girl that uh i went out with for a while and she moved to california and i was really sad it was really a sad thing it was so sad i wrote a song about it Last time I saw you, I was holding your hand And I couldn't wait for you to leave I knew right then that it was 
it's over and done And I couldn't believe that I was free Help me now, I'm going down And I don't know if I'll be When the wind blows and there's a chill in the air I hope that someone is taking care of you I'm alright, yeah, I'm really okay Just so you know, I'm always there for you
sand on the rocks with the tide. I was hers, she was mine, and when she said she would be my bride, then I knew deep inside she was mine. She stole my heart. She caught my fancy.